Welcome to DB Technologies. Uh, in this video, I would like to present you how we realized uh, the PA concept of a German TV casting show. I will show you here a picture of uh, the studio environment. So you can see in the middle we have a show act uh, stage, then we have uh, tribune, balconies uh, in a half circle, so it means 180 degree around. And a lot of light links and trussings over there. And here you can already see some of our speakers we installed. So now, of course, for first we have to decide how to uh, place the speakers. Um, and because of the studio situation, we have some um, special uh, things um, to take care of means the speakers should not be in the camera view so we are not able to do very very long arrays um, and also we had um, the requirement that there are no subs on the floor so means also our subs has to be flown yeah and for this we got a plan of the studio here is the top view um, stage here is the jury then we have the lower balcony and the upper balcony and now we have to find the positions uh, as you could see there are a lot of lighting so means we have to find let me say some holes in the roof to place our speakers and uh, the plan can help us because the set design is done before the PA design uh, and we have to check out where are now the best positions and the best holes to fly our cabinets. For this, we took this uh, picture uh, here to show you where we placed our speakers. So we had 56 uh, VO L208 and 12 VO S118. Uh, as a subwoofer and we decided to divide uh, in the first step uh, later on in the, our software we will see why we did so we have uh, just five rows lower balconies here and um, then we have um, more rows in the upper balcony so we decided to do a half circle of seven clusters um, each cluster had three pieces of L208 just to cover the lower balcony and the other seven clusters had five pieces of VOL208 to cover the upper balcony. And here in the middle you can see the subwoofer but uh, let's go later on to the subwoofer design. For first let's take a look to what we did um, about curving and coverage of the L208 for all these balconies, this half arena. And for this, we are using East Focus. This is a top view of the studio and I hope you can recognize that in here behind you can put a picture which was the studio sketch I had before in the slides and then you just need to put in the right dimensions and after you can start to draw your separate audio zones here so lower balcony lower balcony lower balcony and so on and here upper balcony the right place here is a bit more because this was the uh, front of house position just to uh, be able also to take a look what's coming there and then you can place your clusters and you see I clicked to one of those clusters and we have one two three cabinets of L208 over there and in the side view you can slide up here in ease focus you can take a look to the coverage so this is the lower balcony here is just uh, a walk catwalk for the audience 
and here you have the upper balcony. So these three pieces, for example, are covering the lower balcony. Um, the color you see right now is one kilohertz, three octaves. This is a mapping mode you can switch on here. By the way, it's needed to implement before uh, you start our speaker data. You can download from our website, www. Um, dbtechnologies.com uh, and then implement in the software and then you can place your speaker over there. For example, like the L208 or the S118R. So this is the top view. Uh, another function is you can see here one, two, three, four. These are, let me say, some microphones to take a look uh, about your frequency, frequency response um, at that area and when you go here oh sorry frequency response is there then you can see here microphone one two three four and the frequency range from uh, 36 for example here to 8k and you see the gap is only two three four db so means our coverage for that area is everywhere more or less the same. This is what we would like to reach, of course. Yeah, this is needed. Is focus to um, design um, your setup and to take a look um, in a simulation mode about your um, yeah, about your expectings of your uh, coverage and your sound pressure. Um, in different frequency ranges. So now our clusters are placed and let's take a look. Here for example um, another picture just to give you an impression. You can see here a cluster in the roof, there is a cluster in the roof and in the next slide for example a more detailed the cluster of five pieces and in the back for the lower balcony is the clusters of the three pieces over there. All this has of course to be wired and this can be done by network cabling. All our speakers have the amplifier and DSP on board and the control um, is possible by the software called AuroraNet but for first everything must be wired. This can happen by some switches and an Ethernet network. So uh, computer, switch one, two and three. And behind the switch there has to be the control eight to um, uh, translate, let me say, the different kind of protocols. So and from, from the control eight you can plug in 32 peakers per channel um, to one, one, one channel of the control eights, yes. And uh, yeah, we did it here uh, for each cluster separately. It was really easy to realize um, because uh, the environment of the studio was perfect for this kind of application. So it means we have control, control uh, eight, channel one, first cluster, second, and so on and so on. Only here you can see in the last one we have a daisy chain of six pieces. So it means two clusters at one control eight channel. This was much easier in our case. And why it was so easy and why it is maybe also easy for theaters uh, or uh, venues where you have a, a fixed installed cabling system. Uh, yeah, here in our case we have um, movable trusses in the studio um, where you can put your arrays um, to fly and you can also wire your arrays over there. Means put one array into one of those trusses and then you have power, network and audio which is going to a very very big uh, wall box and from there you can patch everything everywhere in this environment of the studio. So this is very very comfortable um, and makes it totally easy especially for our self-powered systems. The audio wiring is not um, so complex like what we did because we can control everything um, at the DSP of our speakers. So we just decided to do 
from front of house to DME of Yamaha as a matrix um, and from there to wire our speakers only in three lines. So just one line to the sub, one line to the lower, uh, to the upper balconies, upper seats, and another line just to the lower seats. All the other things we are able to control by our software. Our software is AuroraNet. Let's go to the main view. So. Here you can see all our items, all our speakers in the software, both control aids. And you can take a look, for example, to the routing ID, which I had shown you in the slide. So this is how the speaker are cabled. You can take a look to buttons, to presets. Here everything is in full range. A3 is the high frequency compensation. Subwoofer um, to the frequency uh, from 80 Hertz and you can switch to the input meter, output meter, temperature, whatever you want. So let's go back to model and yeah, you can see every item can be moved. So in this case, it is already uh, an overview of the clusters we have uh, in the real environment. And you see some colors here also. And these colors are uh, a sign that this item, this speaker, is uh, already in a group. To put them in a group means mark them, go to the jog wheel and say plus group or add in an existing group. This we did, so we created a group for this cluster, for this cluster, for this cluster, for this cluster, one group for everything. And so you can uh, create your own overview and your own group environment. After you did this, you can switch here by the jog wheel to the group view. And then you can see all groups you created. So one group, for example, for all view tops, one group, for example, for the whole sub array, um, <coughs> a group for the upper balconies completely or separate groups for each cluster. So, for example, you can open this one here. You see one, two, three, four, five L208. So this is very comfortable to organize. But before we finish, let's take a look back to our design. Our design. We placed the VUL208 arrays and we placed our subwoofer array, which is really very special because uh, we couldn't do very long hangouts of subwoofers. It uh, had to be very compact, but very powerful like uh, rock and roll. Uh, like on a rock and roll stage. So we decided to uh, put them into one big source. Three deep only, but uh, four positions. And it's a very special um, design because you can see these four positions here, um, three pieces per position are done in a circle. So it means the front is going to the side, front is going to the side, front is going to the side, front is going to the side. This uh, has the effect that we have uh, the same distance between every um, low, uh, every bus speaker and um, we have one really big omnidirectional source in that case. So here you can see also a top view from uh, the frames we did four positions of motors. Here we fix them together and this is grill to side, grill to side, grill to side. And also this can be simulated of course in uh, Ease Focus. I switched off in that case of screenshot all the top speakers and just did a mapping of 63 Hertz of the four um, positions of our subwoofers. So means you can see 
around here it's a very big omnidirectional one source uh, subwoofer array. And you can also take a look in these focus to side view with which is in uh, that case um, also 63 hertz mapping. And if you are mm, if you are good looking to this mapping, you can recognize that we have not 100% omnidirection. There's a bit more energy down than to the roof. This is because we try to move uh, our coverage down, which is possible. It depends, of course, uh, at the end um, to the array length, but it is a bit possible, as you can see in the simulation, and uh, we realized that in our case, then by AuroraNet. So let's go back to the group view. You see, for example, we talked about the subwoofer and uh, the subwoofer um, turned down a bit. We did by delay. So means top is zero delay. The next group are four pieces of subwoofer with 0.4 delay. And the next four pieces, the lower uh, row is one milliseconds. This was what was possible in a physical way to do. Much more will destroy uh, the impact of our subwoofer. So we tried just to bring down a bit more to the studio floor the subwoofer energy and we did this by the separate group of delay. And the subwoofer itself, they, they are um, all subwoofers in that group. We did some EQ, <coughs> a separate uh, crossover on top to cut it very hardly. Everything of these things are possible. And at the end our subwoofer array was our zero, so it means all the classes should be delayed to this point um, and because of the groups we did we were able to so we have <coughs> the separate arrays from out to the middle and you can see 47 milliseconds 32 milliseconds um, 24 and so on it goes less because the distance to the subwoofer is going less to the middle and you can measure for example we did by smart <coughs> exactly to the face of the subwoofer, every cluster. Yeah, this is very, very comfortable. And you can, for example, the upper balconies push in the level or the lower balconies push in the level. Uh, you can do an EQ, for example, in this case, to all view L28, because all the cabinets are the same. This was a EQ for the studio environment we did. So as you can see, uh, we have a lot of possibilities um, with AuroraNet, with the software to control, especially in such uh, cases where you have uh, a lot of separate arrays. You can very well organize this. But if you uh, would like to know uh, in detail how Aurora works, please take a look to one of uh, our tutorials. By the way, thanks for watching this kind of video. Uh, hope you joined it and could get an impression how uh, such a complex PA system design can be easily handled with the DB Technologies product. Take care and see you soon. Bye bye.